Ever wondered what caused the greatest split in Christian history, the Great Schism of 1054? A pivotal event that shook the foundations of Christianity, the Great Schism of 1054, marked the end of a united Christian church and the birth of two distinct branches, the Eastern Orthodox and the Western Roman Catholic churches. This schism, or divide, is more than a mere footnote in history. It's a seismic shift that forever altered the course of Christianity in the world. It's a tale of politics and power, faith and doctrine, and a clash of cultures that simmered for centuries before finally reaching its boiling point. Two key figures stand at the center of this historic divide. Pope Leo IX, representing the Western Roman Catholic Church, and Patriarch Michael I Kerularius, leading the Eastern Orthodox Church. Their actions and decisions would ignite a rift that continues to this day. But what caused this monumental divide in the Christian world? Let's delve into the crux of the matter. The seeds of the Great Schism were sown long before 1054. So what were they? Well, for starters, there were significant cultural and political differences between the Eastern and Western parts of the Roman Empire. The East was primarily Greek speaking, while the West spoke Latin. This language barrier often led to misunderstandings and misinterpretations, especially when it came to theological matters. Speaking of theology, one of the most contentious issues was the filioque clause. The Western Church decided to add this phrase to the Nicene Creed, a central statement of Christian belief. The filioque clause stated that the Holy Spirit proceeded from both the Father and the Son, a concept rejected by the Eastern Church which believed the Holy Spirit proceeded from the Father alone. In addition to these theological disputes, there was a growing political divide. The Bishop of Rome, or the Pope, was starting to assert more authority over the entire Christian Church. However, the Eastern Church didn't quite see things the same way. They believed in a more equal distribution of power among the five patriarchs of the Church, Rome, Constantinople, Alexandria, Antioch, and Jerusalem. These cultural, political, and theological differences created a rift between the Eastern and Western churches, a rift that was growing wider with each passing year. These were the simmering tensions that set the stage for the Great Schism. But what was the tipping point? 1054 marked the year of the Great Schism. But what was the final straw that broke the camel's back? In the heart of this year, a delegation from Rome, led by Cardinal Humbert, arrived in Constantinople. The mission was to negotiate the mounting religious and political tensions with Patriarch Michael I. However, the negotiations fell through and the situation escalated quickly. Cardinal Humbert, in a move that sent shockwaves through the Christian world, laid a bull of excommunication on the altar of Hagia Sophia, the most sacred church in the East. This act of excommunication was primarily targeted at Patriarch Michael III. In response, the Patriarch refused to be cowed he retaliated by excommunicating Pope Leo IX, though the Pope had already passed away by this point. This mutual excommunication marked the official break between the Roman Catholic and Eastern Orthodox churches. And thus, the Christian world was irrevocably split. But what were the repercussions? The Great Schism of 1054 had far-reaching consequences. But what were they? Let's dive into this riveting chapter of history. In the immediate aftermath of the schism, the division between the Eastern Orthodox and Western Roman Catholic churches solidified. This rift not only altered the course of religious practices, but also had profound implications for politics and culture in both the East and West. On the religious front, theological differences between the two churches became more pronounced. The East and West developed distinct liturgical practices, reflecting their unique interpretations of Christian doctrine. In terms of politics, the schism exacerbated the already tense relations between the Byzantine Empire and the West. It deepened the cultural divide between the Latin West and the Greek East, setting the stage for conflicts and misunderstandings that would last for centuries. The schism also influenced culture. Art, architecture and even language began to diverge more noticeably between the East and West. This divergence, in turn, further entrenched the ideological differences between the two churches. Despite the deep divisions, there have been attempts at reconciliation over the centuries. While full reunion has yet to be achieved, dialogue continues in the hope of healing the wounds left by the schism. Today, the Eastern Orthodox and Roman Catholic churches coexist, each with their own unique traditions and perspectives, 
contributing to the rich tapestry of Christian faith. And so, the Great Schism of 1054 left an indelible mark on the history of Christianity, the effects of which are still felt today.